All right. What's up, guys? Hello. How's it Tony? going? Welcome to the Mystery School. Welcome. Mystery School podcast here. Tonight we got Patrick Tice. Hello. Welcome, Patrick. Thank you. Yes, yeah, good to, good to yeah, meet good you. Good to meet you, Dustin. Welcome to the show. Tony. Yeah, I've uh, I've known you for a while now. It's been a few years. How a many, little bit. What do you think? Four or five years? Six yeah, years? I have probably only talked like the last year and a half, two years, other than what's up. Yeah, having a... Uh, We've never jammed. We never play music together at all, huh? Oh, really? How'd you guys meet up? I'm married to family, huh? Mia's cousin. Oh, so, there you go. So yeah, I mean, so yeah, so family. families in laws. Exactly. There yeah. you go. Cool. Um, you know, Dustin doesn't even know this yet, actually, but Patrick is in a way one of the founders of the Mystery School because he provided the original machine we started. That tape machine. Wow. Patrick gave me that. The relic. Really. We, before that, we were, we didn't have any multi-tracking capabilities. So we were, yeah. it was, everything was just uh, <laughs> on one, one stereo mix. Was that channel? Did you ever get that channel working? It works. <laughs> uh, I guess, no. Uh, well, yeah. <laughs> it it kind of, it does have an issue. I don't exactly know what it is, but the last time I used it, I quarant. I that was me. The last time I All used right, it, technology. it was like buzzing or something. So I just didn't use that channel. But um, we used that for the first two episodes, right? Yeah, it was the first two. The first, very yeah. Yeah. So you if you if you pilot. go listen to the first two episodes, they're on that tape machine. It's the Sweet. it's the Tascam four two four MK two. Yep. The same machine. It started it's it all. Music man, that's I I made a lot of tapes on that. Some Halloween tapes. Some. Some love mixtapes there, of, I still have winning the hearts of, of ladies out there. Most it's actually garbage, but <laughs> yeah, the it was fun. Up there a little more. That's cool. It's uh, actually the same tape machine that I bought brand new, uh, or me and my band bought it back when like we first, uh, like we we'd been a band for like I think six months, and we wanted to like do some recording, so we bought one of those machines, and then we bought four cheap nady star power mics which we've used yeah. on this podcast before like <laughs> i think they were 10 bucks each and then like the cables that were like five bucks each and then we had a 58 and a 57 and we we recorded all our stuff on that nice but it's funny we, we probably bought them at like the same time i'm sure i think i bought that 98 or 99 it was right when uh affordable digital porta studios were still like four or five hundred bucks yeah I, oh, I really wanted to go digital but it was like i could get the cream of the crop tape machine yeah or i could get like a basic digital and i just, just said fuck it i'll go well I'll you go know tape. i'm glad i got the tape machine because if i would have got the digital machine all that stuff all those files would just be lost but having the tape machine i have the physical tapes i got the van shoe yeah. box in my Something garage with all my tapes still in it so yeah yeah, probably it, sounds like shit because they're dusty, but but it exists. If it was <laughs> digital, exist. you would have just deleted all that or lost it or be on a hard drive that Y2K broke or something. Happen and just wipe the whole thing out exactly. in one fell swoop. Yeah, you'd have lost all your shit on the Y2K. You'd been the only guy. The rest of the world kept functioning, but your shit fucking went down. And here it's still in use. It's still here. There it is. It's going. So if you yeah if you ever need that thing uh you ever need that thing back no I don't uh, oh, was it was it a loaner like huh? I said I got it. it it collected a lot of dust which is probably why that channel doesn't work and I never covered it I never cleaned the heads I never took care of it I know you'll probably take well one day though if, if you want to like uh like revive an old tape you can bring it over and we could uh we can we can make that happen okay one of these days you might want I actually to. before I gave it to you I threw all my tapes in there and most of the stuff on there was garbage it was i i basically used it for recording little riffs and ideas that i didn't want to what i use my phone for now so it was a lot of garbage although i had a couple raps from back in the day that i threw down on that thing i'm proud of that's cool i uh i when when i got that thing from you i first I started putting in my old tapes. There was shit on there I had I f completely forgot about. We like did r some rancid covers. I got like three different rancid covers uh, like recorded. Nice. Hey, yeah, you brought funny. out your tape box that one day. We were transferring all the digital files and it's like it all kinds of old recordings on tape. 
Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, I what got you, probably 30 tapes of stuff. What do you think about the the tape versus digital debate? Because me and Tony, we've had a lot of talks about the magnetism involved and can it capture more than digital? What's what's your take on that? I have no idea. That's yeah, way, yeah. way out of my league. I just know that digital... Um, I do photography too, so there's pros and cons to the digital and the in the film. And I think it's kind of the same with yeah. music, you know, tape being like your film where you can throw all your negatives or your tapes in a box and come back to it and so pick it up and, and have it in your hand and stick it in the machine and listen to it or stick it in the slide machine and watch it. But my point being digital gives you too much freedom to polish things way too much. You know, you can go in and like so you wave like the, files the, and so stuff. The purity aspect. Yeah, of you kind of lose the organic the okay. feel of the music, I think. I mean, so, that, so there's the pluses and negatives. There's pluses mediums. and negatives, and you don't have to do that. I mean, you can You just think re- they balance the pros and cons of each medium to where they're you can rate them as equal or do they um, both have their own unique uh, specification that they should be used for? I think recording the analog on tape, I think um, I think you're a better musician recording on tape because you got to get your shit, you got to know your stuff, and there's not, it's it's a lot harder no to, to, to clean it up after the fact if you don't lay down a good track, whereas digital, you can manipulate it and yeah. do that kind of shit. With tape, though, now, the, the way a lot of people do it still is it ends up dump, getting dumped into like a digital... Uh, like a and digital thing polished. anyway yeah and still the same kind of stuff can happen but the other thing now like if you want to do if you wanted to do tape like right now we're doing we're going to do 16 channels digital tonight if we wanted to do 16 channels on tape we would be using like probably like a 150 dollar <laughs> reel of tape yeah that's and, and we'd be on like a multi like thousand dollar machine so it, it's that's like It'd be great to be able to do that. So the cost and benefit ratio. I think you get a great sound off of off the tape for sure. You get that warmth that you yeah, it, that you don't. Well, I my mean, theory can, does it capture something in the room other than just the the sound waves? Does it capture the musician's thoughts? Does it capture the weight of the day? Well, magnetism can I translate think a lot more. Regardless, all this stuff ends up being digital anyway. So if if you're saying well, but yeah, but it, it, does it, it can, is it, it the can. purest format? Does it cut out other? aspects of it like recording the day the feeling of the day or the thoughts going through the musician's head that magnetism has that relates to a magnetic being i guess or the, the thoughts of everything? the day that's even who knows if that gets captured on any format i think well, it what i do like about <clears throat> tape heard. is once you're rolling you're rolling so you any you know anything that's recorded during that set is is on the tape whereas so digital, very you least. can go back oh that's not really very important you cut it out whether it be like Somebody in the background so it's saying bringing something. a vibe at the very least to it, a feeling or a perspective to that recording process that's con- completely unique. Definitely, just so. that you can see reels turning and you see something laying yeah. down. That it does change. It's a tangible the, thing, and you needles put a tape bounce, in. Well, I guess right? you got needles bouncing with everything. But, but yeah, there's the psychology of, of tape. It's know? fun watching the tape roll while you're oh, yeah. back there jamming. You just you can zone especially out the reel to reel too. Yeah, you can watch you the reel to reel. Just we had the reel to reel going. We had to load the reel. You know, yeah, it's got all it's these like, a, like it's like a movie at the theater. You know, you get the it's tape happening. runs out. It's you know, smacking on the reel if you don't stop yeah. it. That's also how we used to end, we'd have to end the jams. Like, we'd look, and, like, the tape has got, like, a little bit left. Like, not enough to start a new song. Yeah. So you're like, we got to jam out the rest <laughs> of this tape. <laughs> Put and it, then it all ends on the line. With the... <laughs> well, I've had many jam sessions not captured even, like, in via digital by not pressing record. Because you can't see that tangible thing of it moving. And you're like... 45 minutes in, like, oh, shit, I but, forgot to press record. Yeah, if you're in, like, we got the tape machine in the room, it would be hard to get jamming without the tape machine rolling because you no, you just see it spinning, yeah. you hear it. So you got that That's aspect. cool to zone out on, for sure. So, hey, so what are you doing recently? You haven't jammed uh, uh, improv for no, a, I haven't. a while? So, I well, I'll give you my background. Um I was 12, getting into snowboarding, had this uh, snowboard video, TB2, I remember it vividly, and uh, a lot of snowboarders I was 
pumped on at the time were on this film, so I was watching it, and there was all this new music on there, some Pennywise and Offspring, um, like old Offspring, Ignition, I think. <laughs> but yeah, there was some music on there, and I'd never heard it before. I was in the eighth grade, and I started, when I got into music, I was listening to like Cream and The Doors and... Do your parents explain yeah, to that? Um, yeah, a lot. Uh, yeah. I mean, while my mom was listening to like Fleetwood Mac and Michael Bolton and stuff like that, my dad was listening to Cream and like Jethro Tull and that classic rock stuff. So I, I started listening to that and I really liked it. That was probably like 11 or so. And then I was 12, watched that video and I heard some punk music for the first time. And I was like, wow, this shit's cool. You know, it's fast. I'd never heard anything fast like this, that. That was the epiphany. Oh, I was, I was a hooked. New scene. Not only was this video, I was stoked because all these snowboarders were just getting crazy. And you snowboarded and skated. And I snowboarded, I was getting into it. It's the skate punks. Exactly. Pennywise, I listened to that. I went out and bought the Unknown Road album. Then I started discovering, um, you know, this music. Fuck authority. And, the, and then at the same time, this neighbor across the street, this older guy, he was like a, he was, he had just moved in, ponytail, worked out at Hewlett Packard, this mad scientist kind of guy. Had a garage very similar to Tony's. The mullet dude, the business in the front, party in the back. But he, I hadn't really talked to him, but he was out in his garage one day playing a, a electric guitar, and he had a Fender Twin Reverb, and I was hearing him play, and I was like, oh, cool, he's got a guitar. You know, so I went up there, I'm 12, and I was like, hey, dude, how's it going? He's like, oh, that's cool, you know. And he's you play adult. the guitar, huh? Yeah. <laughs> you want to play it? And I'd never even picked up a guitar before, and I was like, Fuck yeah, I want to play it. So, yeah, uh, I was playing with this guy in his garage, and he started showing me a couple chords and stuff, and he was listening to, he had, like, crates of records and CDs and stuff, and he was listening to, like, 80s uh, punk, like, Husker Du and Naked Ray Gun and Reagan Youth, Bad Brains, that kind of stuff. And again, stuff I'd never heard of, and I was, you know, he was showing me, oh, this stuff's cool and it's real easy to play. You know, here, here's some bar chords and blah, 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 and he's showing me what he's doing. And I was like, wow, you know, I just heard some cool music. And then at the end of the the little session, I guess, he's like, I got a an extra guitar and an amp if you want to borrow it. And my jaw just hit the floor, <laughs> and I was like, fuck, yeah, I want to borrow it. So he sent me home with this stuff, and I plugged it into my room and made a bunch of noise and <laughs> pissed my parents off. But <laughs> what, what was it? What was the guitar and amp? Do you remember? Uh, the amp was like this Radio Shack PA amp. Uh -huh. It wasn't even a guitar amp. Uh -huh. But the, but the, the guitar was an Ibanez, this metal guitar, but it was a badass guitar. It played really well, and... Uh, but it had the Floyd Rose shit on it, but I thought that was cool at the time. And, and it, yeah, it had like two humbuckers. It was like a Strat type, a little more, exactly, a little more pointy. Yeah, but needless to say, I learned how to do the whole Floyd Rose thing. Like but, and they're a pain in the ass. You're doing dive bombs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, it was a long time before I was doing any dive bombs. I was just making racket in my bedroom. But I'd go over to his house, you know, a couple times a week. He'd show me a few things, and we'd jam. And then I just started playing with some friends in school. One of my friends was a drummer and started listening to Nirvana. I could play it. It was easy. I could listen to it, figure out the chords. We'd jam a ton of Nirvana, built a stage in my friend's bedroom. It was like, took up half his room. It was insane now that I'm thinking about it. I mean, it was literally like his bed, his bed in this fucking stage like carpeted how, stage like, like one foot high drum no it was 24 inches off the ground i mean it was the <laughs> Did real you guys deal. build it oh hell yeah sawn yeah. in his bedroom and everything it was it was crazy his what, mom why mom. did you feel like you needed a stage to be on because we thought it was cool we didn't need it we didn't <laughs> like we definitely didn't need it we weren't worthy of one but we just thought it would be cool <laughs> how are we gonna work on our stage presence if we don't get a stage there you go so yeah we uh Played Nirvana and never really wrote any original stuff. Um, it was just cover <laughs> shit of what we were listening to. At you the were time. playing guitar at the time. I was playing guitar, yeah. And but, then you, were you singing too? No, I never really sang. Um, was there a bass player? Yeah, we had a bass player. Well, we had a friend who played guitar, and then I think he 
grabbed a bass and was kind of playing bass. None of us were any good. The drummer was probably the best. Uh-huh. Um, but then I started, you know, had access to a drum set, so I'd pick up the drums every once in a while and play them. And I always liked the drums, but they were too loud. And my stepdad at the time wasn't going to have a drum set, so I just would play over at his house and, and kind of picked it up. But then out of high school, I started... I tried to put together a little punk band with some other guy who I'd never played with and threw a an ad up or a flyer up at Sierra College when I started going there with the numbers on it and some dude ripped off a number and we started like, jamming. You get put your number on the bottom and it's yeah. got slits. <laughs> yep, exactly. Cut the yeah. slits with the scissors, tear it off. <laughs> so he hit me up and we played some stuff and uh, we wrote some original stuff. It wasn't very good. I was trying to sing and play guitar and my lyrics were not very good um did you write that, tunes first and then come up with lyrics based on the rhythm? i always wrote the music first because i i could like, yeah. i could write music decently you, but you were into the music the lyrics were like well we got to have somebody <laughs> saying <laughs> something yeah and exactly <laughs> and uh yeah i was i was writing really bad lyrics and then i moved away shortly to san francisco and uh so that went away. Then I wasn't playing music. I mean, I had my stuff. And then I ended up buying a drum set. Just for the fuck of it? No, I was trying to put together another band in the, in San Francisco, and um, it was just hard to find a fast drummer. That's why and, I started playing drums. And I kind of like, knew how to do it. I mean... And I always liked the drums, and now I was, you know, I had my own place, so I... You, need, you knew you needed to get a set and just start pounding it exactly. out. Exactly. Huh? So I bought a set, started playing drums in the band in the Bay Area, and uh, was having a good time with that, writing some good stuff. The singer was good. We were all buddies. In fact, the guy who ripped off the number from Sierra College ended up moving down to the Bay Area, too. And uh-huh. we ended up living together and playing music together again. You. So that was cool. That's funny. All All because of... A little quarter phone number that you somebody ripped off. You know? Exactly. Was the singer? Did he just sing exclusively, or did he? Yeah, he like sang. Yeah. He sang. What do you think about that? I think I'd like that. Uh, I, I would. I was. If I had a band, and I could choose in a perfect world, I think that the singer would just sing. That I would agree. be their instrument. I agree, hundred percent. You, yeah, you can. They're the front man. That. That's yeah. You know, they're when, not the singer. They're the they're the front man, and they. Carry and if the they were boat. playing a guitar, the the singing would take away from the guitar part, and the guitar part would take away from the singing. Yeah, I feel a a, a vocalist strictly just has more uh, stage presence. I mean, they're not tied down so by a mic stand or anything. They can interact with the crowd, with the band. I mean, so it's, it's just, not just as an instrument; it's right. as the it's the interface between the crowd and, and the band even and the stage presence. Even in the music that I've seen live, I, I feel the same with that too. It's always better to watch a live band where this where there's a front man because it just there's always more energy. I feel yeah, with the rare exception of those badass power trios. Not uh, saying yeah, not saying but that it's its own different. Kind exactly. Of, yeah. Yeah, I'm not saying that you can't be a good band with yeah. with a singer and a, a instrumental. Inst- someone playing the instrument but it's um, nice to have that solid the drums they just drum bass they just play the bass guitar they just play the guitar where the men lead and then the singer just sings rem- i mean that's remember just, I'm sure uh, about that. you saw afi right back back in those like what the like actually i didn't so? see i didn't see afi for the first time till like 99 i think uh-huh remember how crazy davy havoc would be just singing he'd be standing like right in the crowd he's oh, yeah. like face right up to like people you know kids basically you know people yeah. 15 year olds he's just like screaming right in their face <laughs> yeah. with the microphone down there it was like an intense thing i still feel they're uh, they're still one of my favorite bands even their music's changed so much and gone completely away from what they used to be but uh-huh. they're still a solid band they they write solid material still have energy yeah still i haven't seen them in years have you seen them like um yeah i've seen them recently i think probably a year and a half ago uh-huh. not on this latest album but the album before that that actually was their. well having that vocalist being its own instrument it's like that concept of when when you're just writing riffs and then writing lyrics on top of it because you know there needs to be words 
it's just like okay i'm I'm a musician writing words because it needs to happen to where you have this person who can get in someone's face they just sing they can connect with people they can write lyrics they well, just so focus on that i mean they're sitting in the room the whole time you guys are playing so right. they're like yeah. just off the soaking in, and they're soaking like they're definitely writing like stuff between. down. There's all that extra effort that goes straight into the vocals. Well, in the crowd, know? they ultimately connect with the words more than anything and sing along, right? So he's the, the lead vocalist. He or she is that kind of that transition between the band's creative focus and you know the voice of uh, the fan, the people, and yeah, getting in their face, connecting, vibing with that. Yeah, that's something a lot of artists and musicians can't do because they're the introvert. They're channeling music from a different space, you know, so they can't share their uh, feelings purely in words, you know. So it relates to sound. So they're hidden behind that. So that vocalist is like just a unique aspect. Yeah, I always wanted to be a vocalist. Just love it. But I just can't. I'm too critical of my writing. I think in probably the 20 songs I've attempted to write, I've there's been like two lyrically that I actually felt was worth keeping. Uh-huh. Whereas the band I'm playing now, uh, the singer just pumps the, the shit. I don't know how he does it. Music and words just pumps it out like nobody's business. And it's all good, solid stuff. And, uh-huh. I, I just don't have that knack for it. Yeah, that's their angle. Like, you know, some people think rhythmically or chord exactly. progression-wise. Yeah, that I brings mean, up the whole drummer thing I was talking about. That's why I just gravitate towards the drums because it's more of a visceral instrument. Like, you you sit down, the sticks are in your hand, you're putting the sticks to the head. Like the tape to digital. All, it's just, yeah. it's it's a full, you're feeling the instrument. And not to say that you don't do that with with the, with guitar and stuff, but but you really are. Yeah, you're, you're hitting you're hitting a note instead of that abstract idea that a singer has to put down into words or and put it into a tune or a format and rhyme or not rhyme. I mean, yeah, that's a lot different. I mean, it's an abstract idea where with other instruments you can touch, feel, create the notes through movement. You know, so yeah, it's a it's a neat combination. We had a neat uh, conversation with Adam of a. Uh, Golden Cadillac singer songwriter and just he experienced both uh, aspects of it have writing words lyrically being a vocalist when they, there's music written and then writing words first and then writing music around it and being a drummer you can appreciate that from both angles because you you want to you know try to choose the feature you know, each piece but it's a neat debate I mean yeah. Yeah, I always felt I could come up with a good verse or a good chorus, but then when I try and build the rest of the song, it just rarely worked out. Yeah. Well, so what are we to me focus at least? On tonight, but I'm pretty, cr- think, I'm pretty wise. critical. What? But what, 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 are we going to go the punk rock angle? Experimental jam angle. Yeah, yeah, sounds good. We could. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, I'm we just go a lot whatever. of free form to where we just we have no boundaries. We haven't but done. But we like to feature we the really guest done a, style. Like a group of like punk type songs. No, we haven't had much punk rock. There's a lot of blues style people on, which is Tony's thing. I'm more of a rock drummer, not punk rock, but like maybe progressive or metal more kind of a drummer. Okay. Um, we've had a lot of blues, but I don't think we've had much punk rock featured on here. Well, it's, shit, let's change that. Yeah. Yeah, I figured like. I grew up playing punk. I know how to play this stuff. Yeah, hey, you're a and punk. And you know rocker. how to do it. Dustin, you played in a punk band, right? I, I, yeah, well, I, yeah, I was a punk band drummer for hire. Yeah, but you, so mean, you're saying you got that's the capabilities. Punk, that's I have the capabilities drummer. to play right. punk rock, yeah. Let's see if, like, let's see if we can pull off some authentic punk. Sounds yeah. good. What well, style, what style we are we going for? Are we going I figured, okay, I, I didn't figure we would go, uh, like, super authentic, like, not straight into, like, the, Ramon Sex Pistols Clash. I figure yeah. we tend to be sure. I'm I don't to be honest. I'm not a, a punk aficionado at all. I mean, I'm I know, not I either. Pennywise. I really dug Pennywise, the skate punk. Uh, yeah, know? that's right. I mean, hey, I like, I like that kind. But I figure tonight we take it to late '90s punk, the stuff that we. I'll follow you guys. The stuff that was new when we were 16. We play some of the, you know, some like social D. So the pre grunge like before Nirvana kind of stuff. Sounds good. Maybe some. Uh, Maybe a little AFI type parts if we can get there. You got the triple rectifier. You should... Dual rectifier. Oh, dual rectifier. We're only rectified. Three's the crowd, only, man. We're only, re- we're only rectified twice tonight. So it's only 100 watts as opposed to 150. Exactly. So, I mean, it, 
It should be loud enough, right? I I think I think it will be. Well, I think it could blow let's our get brains to it. out if it wanted to. Yeah, it's a pretty loud amp. Yeah. Although I'm pretty excited. I've never played it through a Marshall cab, so that should be interesting. And I've heard it's a good combo, so yeah, I'm pretty excited cool. to I hear think that. they're the same. Oh no, yeah, the your cab has the vintage Marshall? 30s, right? Yeah. Yeah, these are the 75 watt Celestial or whatever. But yeah, we haven't even fired it up yet. We got right. we plugged it in. We haven't even sound checked. Huh? We haven't sound checked have yet. Shall we do that? Let's do it. All right.
bring it. We're back. I'm All back. Right. All right, we're back. I'm back. Patrick's back. I think we're I'm here. back. Hey, it's going down. So Brown, huh? we 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 did it. We jammed it out. We did. Yeah, you played every, we you played all instruments here. You played the bass, guitar, the guitar, and you played uh, the drums. You started on the guitar, did that for a while, and then you went which to the I've, bass, which I rarely play bass, and that was fun. That was a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah totally the bass is bass. fun. Yeah, yeah I, I don't play that much bass either. Yeah, I don't play much bass either. Yeah, Dustin played bass at the end. Patrick's playing drums. That was good. There was there were some good grooves we got rid of. in in each combination. Yeah, that's what I loved about going from like uh, playing classical music with clarinet to going to uh, the bass and originally finding drums was the rhythmic nature of the bass. Like I, I couldn't, I could never really play guitar other than to write songs and bass, but it was more of, of a rhythmic nature of the song, the rhythm of the song, the tempo, and then the the keys of the song. I could never do like that, that Zeppelin like really awesome. The yeah, technical shit. Like, yeah. That's ex- it's like bar chord, bass, rhythm. Yeah. Ba- it, it's, a, it's a feeling instrument. You I like with it. on the bass. I mean. Uh, it's fun. What would you say you feel more comfortable on? Um, well, drum, drums first? No. No? Yeah. Probably, yeah, drums. Then what, bass? Because that rhythm, rhythmic shit, connection? I don't even consider me, that I play a bass. I just. You're just a drummer. Like me, like I don't. I well, consider he, myself. No, he drums and guitars. Percussion. Yeah, so but, drums but guitar. I haven't. I haven't been back on drums because I started playing drums and then I stopped about 2005, and then I just started picking them up again, like in the last couple months. Out of necessity. So, uh, again. kinda, yeah. Drummers are hard to find, huh? Yeah, well, that's why I picked it up. So well, the and the style of work. music that we're playing is completely out of style in this area. So, finding a drummer who can play the beats that you're looking for, which is a pretty. What yeah. are What are you guys playing? Um, punk, like uh-huh. '90s punk, uh-huh. and uh, was it at all similar to the stuff we were playing tonight? No, it's kind of different. Yeah, yeah, it was different, or it is different. Yeah, punk is uh, for me is probably my most difficult genre to play in. Yeah, it's like especially when jamming. Like, um, it's almost like I'm trying to play a song from memory. Like, I'm I'm within that box of trying to stand up to that. And like, yeah, I know I bastardized it to all you punk fans out there. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, there was like some I was good, just trying to keep up. There was some good shit. Yeah, in there like, when I was on bass and you were on yeah. when I first picked up the bass yeah. and we had that Pennywise sounding song. Yeah, yeah that, was that was a good. Yeah, it's that kind of, good it's that group. swinging. Up Two tempo, four, yeah. bass driving. It was the power trio, like you said. Yeah. Tony was holding down the guitar rhythm, and he was busting leads. We had the bass going. You were. I liked that. That was like almost blues punk right there. It was cool. Like, it was really cool. Kind of Jimi Hendrix meets Pen- Pennywise. And, and it didn't need, it didn't need vocals. Over you didn't it. sing all night, huh? No, not, not nobody was singing. Not it was just yelled out. I think I actually, one of the few times. Behind the kit playing there when you were on the bass, like you said, starting to go, and I was yelling out like, "Yeah, yeah!" Like, I don't know if we picked it up, but we, we were, got mics over there. Yeah, so. I, I mean, I, you, Patrick, hit that groove like a few times, and with that lead, Tony, on top, like I just like had to shout out two I, or three times, just <laughs> yeah, yeah. My head was swinging a couple times there. Yeah, you guys have both got that hip rocking. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah, we were grooving it. Huh? That was fun. Yeah. If there was the YouTube video version, you'd see us kind of bouncing along at some parts. And that's when you know it's working. I mean, ultimately, yeah. like as a musician, you try to get some hip shaking. I mean, yeah, I didn't feel it was working at all when I was playing guitar. I felt it started working when I switched. You think? I thought, yeah. I agree. Yeah. Like the vibe that in the room, like, yeah, really, uh, yeah, sunk in. But I would think um, almost that too, because I'm out of my element playing punk. And uh, with me and Tony, I think I know him pretty good on the bass, but we've played maybe two, three, four times, me and him on the on the bass. I know him really well on the guitar. And I know him better on the bass of, like, listening back and finding what he's doing because he's, like, almost listening to me like the drummer where I'm listening to him as the drummer when he's playing guitar, if that makes sense. I'm so, following it. Yeah, when you hop on the say. bass, yeah. <laughs> 
Uh, well, some people out there know, probably know what we're saying, but the uh, bass vibe, I agree with you, Patrick. Like, it, it was fun playing your amp. I never, uh, I've never played like through a dual rectifier. Yeah, it's a cool amp. Yeah, it sounded sweet. It's uh, like you were experiencing though behind the drums. It's fucking harsh when you're standing right in front of it. Uh huh. The sound is yeah, just the cabinet pointed right at no, you. Oh, it's just loud as fuck. Yeah, it, but it's got a good. It's got a good sound. It's Made to fucking rock and roll. Yeah. It was fun playing on it. It I started with it kinda at your setting and then I throughout the night I kept backing off the gain, you know, trying it. You know what's a good amp is uh the Mark V. Uh huh. That's a badass amp. What's that one? It's a it's a Mesa. It's a Mesa, yeah. And it's got the five band equalizer on it. Five channel amp. Uh huh. It's but it's got like a chorus on it and everything. It's just crisp, good, clean sound. And then it's got a rock and distortion too. Uh, yeah, I never played that one. Yeah, it's a cool amp. I normally play that Vox with all these pedals. And... See, I've never played a Vox. I haven't really played much of anything really. I it's, had it's this. a different it's a different deal. Like that Vox doesn't doesn't have any distortion at all unless you turn it all the way up. It it's like super loud and super clean. So you have to, if you want any kind of drive or anything, you got to kind of put it in front. Uh -huh. So were it's you a running deal. through the pedals tonight? No, tonight I was going straight into your amp, which was cool. Yeah, I, yeah it was fun just playing like right into the amp. The amp was dirty. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah, that's and on the bass. You didn't have any of the, the effects going through it either. Nope, bass was straight in. into the bass amp too. Yeah, it was raw, man. It was raw. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's good. I think we accomplished the mission. We, Although the, no, we did. We we hit some late '90s style in there. Some yeah, up tempo. We had some yeah. kind of or some social distortion yeah, sound like late, and stuff. Some, we got some late '90s punk in there. There was even that's a little grunge we towards the beginning. Yeah, and there was some uh, a little classic rock right in there. There was, <laughs> there was, there was yeah, some of that. yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was the Jimi Hendrix meets Pennywise kind of. That's what I would describe it as. Yeah, well, there was a wasn't there a brief ACDC period? I do well, towards, yeah, when I was Patrick on the bass first at hit the, the end drums. When, when Patrick was on the drums, yeah, that was the ACDC moment. We covered a lot of ground today. Yeah, tonight. that's what you want to do with jamming. Like, you just put yourself out of the element and like bring the guests on, feature their style of music, and hopefully pull them out of the element. Yeah, I don't really you think don't I've ever expect. been in a. And like I said, in the last 15 years, been in the jam. High school was the last time, and those were not good jams. <laughs> Fun jams. Yeah. Just if you recorded Feeler them. Feeler time jams. And you're feeling your way. Would you equate, I, I'd say uh, it, jams is kind of just like meeting people that you can relate to conversation-wise, and then you can jam with them. It's kind of like a, almost like the first band practice people ever have is like kind of like in a way like what we did yeah exactly it's it's so weird it's like, you're meeting people who you don't know and they play instruments and, and you're talking you about your it's just this, uh, this, <laughs> this, <laughs> <laughs> i don't know about that. <laughs> but yeah this was like <laughs> see just, like i didn't know he was gonna do that tonight you just I you did. never know what, <laughs> what to expect but then we sat down and plugged in and fumbled around for a little bit and then switched it up and found the groove and we like jammed. Fumble around. Jam, yeah. Jamming takes bravery. You have to fumble through the darkness to find the light. It's definitely, <laughs> you go through kind of a, there's some weird head spaces involved. Yeah, agreed? it is. Yep. Because you're like, you're trying to keep up with what's going on. And if you start getting on something, maybe that's sounding kind of cool, then you don't want to fuck that up. And, <laughs> nope. and I fucked it up many times in there. And I was like, all right, let's keep it going another round. So we got another stretch of some good shit. We got we got some good stuff in there. I know. Have I you guys fuck. ever had it when you're jamming and you're like uh, getting that really awesome groove and you have an out-of-body experience where you're almost listening to yourself and as like uh, you're li listening to this band <laughs> and you're like almost for a second, I've had it maybe once or twice. When for a second watching this band from a, a third person perspective, and I'm like above this group live, <laughs> and I'm like, how's this drummer doing this? 
how's the music hey. doing this? And then, then I try to emulate what I'm doing in that jam moment. You come in and just drop back into your body. You can't do that lick for like a second because you're just thinking about it. And then you go, oh, shit. I come back, stop thinking about it, go to the groove. You find the groove, and then you're back there jamming consciously. But I, I, I thought I, you were going to talk about something that I've experienced, but... At some point, I realized no, definitely not. Yeah. <laughs> I've it's never, body, I've never been out of body, but I do. But I get, I am able yeah. to separate what I'm doing and listen, or or listen to the totality of all the instruments, and be like, yeah, that's. I guess that's, that's what it you right do there. the whole time as a drummer while in your body, right? You're like that listener. I never lose myself as much as you're making it out to be. I it's definitely get, I definitely, you know, <laughs> there's times where I lose myself a little bit, but. I'm too focused on fucking up, so I've, but, yeah. I'm always but conscious. Take this, it's been twice in the entire time that I've been playing. I mean, where you have that moment. That's where, cool, though. That's power. That's a powerful moment. There, that's where, like called a religious experience. Yeah, seriously. Uh, maybe, yeah, you can equate it to whatever <laughs> label you want, but I mean, yeah, it's, it's touching an with another different kind of reality where you're like. But well, I would I would equate it to where any like if you guys played sports where you get in the zone, you just start making baskets. Like you just you maybe know you're going to make the shot. Yeah, and everything it. everything just kind it of slows fades down. away, and you don't exactly. even focus on it, and you're just shooting the baskets, and you're zeroed in you're exactly. like a laser. I get and it. Then, some of yeah. those remember those some of those big slams at ping pong when I was playing you. Yeah? Exactly, <laughs> ping, ping those pong, lasers. Like, you're in that you're in that zone, but and then it's like you can transition slow motion. So when you're in the zone, if you start thinking about, wow, I'm in the zone, how am I in the zone? And then you suck back in, You and you're, with music, with jams, shit's happening so quickly. Okay, I feel, I feel you're what like, you're saying. Oh, shit. And then you, you do it, and like you're doing a fill. You stumble for a second because you're trying to do it all of a sudden instead of just doing it. Like you snap then out you just, of it. Yeah, and you, or you come back into it, and you're in and out of that headspace, and it's always good. But like. That's the best thing about jamming. Well, that's the thing. You're outside you, your box. You get jamming, yeah. you get kind of going in the zone, and then yeah. you get snapped out of it, right? Yeah. you just like, oh, shit, I'm fucking out of it. I, exactly. You, you play in some... a positive or negative. Like, in the best moments, like me, the best moments, you snap out of it completely. We're like, holy shit, we he- elevated to that level. And then you, how do you do it? You try to emulate it, and you pop back in like, oh, shit. Then you emulate it, and then you go to that moment where you snap back out of it below, like, oh, fuck, like. You know, you go out of that groove and you try to pull it back up to that, like, just normal conscious vibe. Do you I've, think uh, the, the parts that you're in the zone, do you think that's some of the best sounding stuff? Or do you think it might be slightly unrelated? No, it's the best sounding stuff for sure. When I, yeah, when I, I play back, when yeah, I feel I'll it, back, it's like that part of it. could just be like, you, you felt just, like you were bro, in the zone. No, <laughs> no, there's those other times, yeah, you do feel like you're in the zone and it's, and it's for pure pleasure. You're doing the groove and, and you even know maybe sometimes consciously. Sometimes you get caught up in the zone though and you get a little too comfortable yeah. and then you fuck up and you're like, but it's and it snaps zone, you out of the zone. Like, yeah, like this feels amazing right now, but I know it's not going to sound good to anybody else. And when I listen back, I'm going to be going, wow, when you were in that moment, you were indulging like in yourself and it's fun there. But I think we had yeah. some good sounding moments that wasn't just in my. Yeah, we hit that in zone this, groove, I think, where you we, can get we all, jam. all three of us were on the same level. Yeah, we locked in for, for sure a few times. And that's fun to do with people you've never played with before, never even met. Like you can just hit that moment and go, boom, here we are. Yeah, here's a conversation that's completed together. Here's your voice. I'm going to compliment your voice. It's the beauty of music. Support. Yeah. It's the ultimate language, right? It's a good one. It's a powerful yeah. one. It's before words. What do you think? Transcends. Music, music. How about you? What's that? Latin music. Music <laughs> or Latin? <laughs> music. I think you guys are right. I agree too. How about this? Though? As like useful Sanskrit as Sanskrit or music, music, the holy language. Uh, how about this? Hieroglyphics or music? Both. Music. Both. Oh, he's because music can make images and sound simultaneously. Where hieroglyphics, that hieroglyph. Hi- hi- I guess you could translate that mentally into sound by visually, but where I think I don't. Well, I guess the same way you have to translate music auditorially and the visual sounds like equal right you're looking at hieroglyphics <laughs> and you see a guy holding a clay pot what kind of sound are you going to get out of that yeah that's why i would say music but hieroglyphics <laughs> Patrick, what would you I say just, 
Well, I'd have to say music, but the hier- there's something about hieroglyphics. Pick, pick hieroglyphics. No, so. I said pick both. Oh, because they're people. they're yeah. just an art I form in themselves. Honestly, even when you don't know what they what it's saying, it just the detail that goes into it. It wasn't a very good question. It deserved a sassy answer. Well, what would you pick? Uh, I'd pick music. I don't really think it's that necessarily. So do you think music would supersede all like, uh, combinations? Well, I honestly, this where I this? live. Speaking English is pretty helpful. You know, I mean, it's kind of important to know the, the language of the country you live in, and then maybe music second. What do you think? Would of you, course. <laughs> would you well, rather? So live? if you had to choose between if being I, able to play music or speaking English, what I, would you choose? That's a tough question. I, yeah, would, would you choose it'd the be system? Tough though, <laughs> right? It'd be tough to not speak uh-uh. English and try to like get a. Like burrito at Chipotle, but you can understand yeah. English, right? And you could no, n- no, I no, I said <laughs> just music. speak English or speak music. No, but you can understand English, just like people who who are mute can't speak English, but they can understand it and communicate Sorry, musically I didn't, or science. I didn't know all the technicality. No, there was no you added you added the technicality. I just said music, right? I don't. I guess I'd have to go music. Yeah. Because you can convey English, you can convey Sanskrit, you can convey hieroglyphics musically. You can paint images through rhythm, And you rhythm, can turn right? music up, too. You can just turn it up fucking loud. Yeah. And some yeah. theories say that rhythm and music started uh, thought words, right? And language. That before language, there was rhythm. If I hear you playing something I don't get, I'll be like, oh, that must be his Sanskrit. Well, if you if you're not playing as well too, I don't know musical if, Sanskrit. Me neither, but I think if we couldn't speak English and like I had to like use only sounds and tones to communicate, you can definitely uh, definitely convey thought musically, like going da 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 through your toms, going from a low to high pitch, or with your strings. That's a question. <laughs> going going from high to low. That's a statement. <laughs> 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 that's a statement. <laughs> 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 You know, you know what, what the fuck are you doing? Can you get me a drink? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Do, 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 thank you. Do, 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 do. Yeah, I'm going to fucking work this motherfucker. Do, 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 do. Right? If Dustin loses his voice and he starts playing dr- little drums, they <laughs> talk to you. It's like I'm gonna go. To, I'm gonna go up to somebody to work tomorrow and go. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Don't know you're saying a question. Don't, like, don't know you're what, asking the do question. Do you need to go to the bathroom? Exactly. <laughs> and then if you go, do, 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 be like. Oh, you okay, just went. Yeah, got you, bro. You you uh, you got it. Let's try it out. Yeah. Hey, I don't know. Music. Everything is, is valid crazy. here. Yeah, it is. You heard it right there. That. Yeah. He, he just. Uh, we heard it first. We're throwing thoughts out here. He just throws them out. He throws a casts a pretty wide net. That's music theory for you, one hundred and one. Right, high to low is a statement. Low to high is a question. So music is communication, you know, and like, what is a label? Like what's insane? What's not insane? What's a belief? All these things that we can say are plausible, right? In the realm of probability, quantum physics, it's all, it's there. So we can't even, we we can have to just take everything we say here as wacky as it is. Like it's, it's something and we can't laugh or dispute it, right? Oh, we can laugh and dispute. Yeah, we can laugh and dispute, we should. Right, but but we shouldn't say it's impossible, right? I, I think there's. Time you think there's to, impossible? There's stuff? time to say shit's impossible. I wouldn't. I would say improbable, but nothing's impossible. There's different levels, like a a wave and particle. Maybe. Particle is the spot. That's the most probable spot where the it's going to travel. But the wave, the the outer spectrum, the edge is the most improbable. But it has to exist. There's no impossible. The edge right. of the wave has to hit. Do you know what he's talking about? I'm trying to fall. I'm, <laughs> I'm feeling it a little bit. Yeah, there's a... <laughs> well, we only know a fraction of reality. And one millionth. One hun- yeah, one hundredth of one millionth. You ever... Reality, if you go into the quantum you, view... You guys are... Do you like Incubus at all? I do. You know what I'm talking I about do. on that one <laughs> on the science album, yeah, yeah. Were you were you spinning from some the electromagnetic incubi- spectrum? Yeah, no, no, that's a, one, no, one. It's just a sample. What we can what we can touch, hear, feel, and see is less than one millionth of reality. one billionth of one, reality. Yeah, 
Yeah, one, mi- one billionth yeah. or one millionth. I thought it was one. All this comes out of a misquoted Incubus <laughs> lyric? No, it was quoted from like someone like, uh, I don't know. I don't know I who it was. It was, was a sample like, of some Buckman's someone talks in the song. Doing it. Yeah, it but was yes. like. Uh, yeah, it says your, that, uh, what is what is the lyric? The electromagnetic spectrum has uh, yeah, said that what humans can touch, feel, see, and hear is less than one millionth reality something I mean, like that yeah One. i think we're close enough <laughs> that's a good cd right there all right <laughs> okay settle down that was uh, yeah, the science is a good album got up and moshed pit. yeah that science cd there tony mr skeptic yeah that was yeah. a good album we have to break our belief system drive the next one that. was a good one also yeah. but then because I, that's so true like uh, we we measure everything that we've proved to this point has been with macroscopic tools macroscopic yeah. thinking large thinking we're trying to measure things on this finite level now on this microscopic level now this quantum are we level, still talking that, about incubus how about the no we're, how about we're our, talking about how tying into i'm saying how about the jam focus. tonight what what level were you on in that I jam? I think that's to talk. That's tapping into that microscopic quantum level of like pre-speaking. Like it measure, it goes beneath the macroscopic level. It's a microscopic tool of it's, thought. Like we're communicating almost telepathically. When you talk about this, wave. do you have an image in your head of something going on? Of course. I'm. I'm. I'm trying to follow what you're. What you're going with. But with this, what? Well, this micro, get, well, well, this well, micro. Well, you know, physics with a, a particle and a beam. Your idea that's about the jam having right this there. microscopic thing. I, well, I wasn't I, very good at physics. Well, because I mean, a I've, jam is when you think of a micro, a microscopic thing. A macroscopic thing is like me moving my arm, a visible huge thing. I think on a microscopic or a quantum level, even smaller than microscopic, that's a thought. That's the particle and the beam, the electronic signal traveling through neurons in your brain. You know, that's something that we are just now learning to measure with mic- larger macroscopic tools like a microscope, which is a big thing that we can see. And we're trying to measure things that are, you know, like that we can't touch in other dimensions and bending things, you know, and that the particle and the wave. And yeah. like, that's the improv where you come into nothing's impossible. When you start studying quantum physics, string theory, where there it's it comes down to probability, not impossibility. How would you relate that to playing in? To the jam tonight. I think a jam is because um, <laughs> you would relate it to a jam as a, it's an improbability that's happening as how you can t- tie a random thought going in bet- between one person's brain and then you multiply it by however many people are in the room. So you have two, three, four, five in the room. So that <laughs> creates the improbability of something coming together that matches up and makes something that is a, sounds like a song or you hit on the one and the two. Not just kids making noise or going, bah, 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 bah. you know, everybody doing their own thing si- gotcha. simultaneously. So, and then there's, you know, there's that probability of it all sounding like shit. You know, the more musicians you have in the room, there's a higher probability. Is it going to sound like shit? But then if they're better quality musicians, the higher probability that it's going to work. But well, if they, I think our quality improved over the night because we started off. And then the probability of it being quality, as you know, because we now we've known each other better. We haven't met before, so we know what it's going to sound like. We have a, an agenda. You have sheet music in front of you with those skilled musicians. The probability is higher that you're going to execute and hit on the downbeat. There's no sheet music, you know, right? That's how it all relates to. It's that microscopic level of us <laughs> simultaneously talking, right? Well, this whole probability talk about jamming it seems so so nerdy. <laughs> Whatever you want to call it, Mr. Label Belief System Man. Well What's impossible like, what else is impossible? I just don't see why we're talking about improbability. Like You asked how many times how I could relate it to music to music. How many times tonight do you think that we got in the pocket? Uh um, could... I mean it it was different times had different you know amount like we got certain times like really tight grooves certain times we got close you know to some stuff I said three there was times parts, there was parts to where it was uh yeah like we were just looking for it you know yeah 
So I would say, you think three, I think at least five times we, we got in there. What do you think? I'd say about five. And then there was a lot of parts. Three where, to five. There was yeah. a lot of parts where. Uh, so there you go. There's like, our good wave range. Or there was, the I know at the beginning, there were some parts where, like, right as I was kind of starting to feel it, we would move on, which was fine. Uh huh. But yeah, I just. Usually takes me a little warm up to start feeling what I'm doing. Uh huh. Yeah, it was, it was a fun Yeah, jam. that's the probability of the jam moving on <laughs> is one person is getting ADD and wants to go to an, another part. <laughs> You're feeling the groove, you know, and Mr. ADD drummer is like, hey, I want to go on to the next part. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was just me taking forever to fucking figure out the chord combination. And then once I finally started getting it, we'd been playing it too long and it sounded like shit because I was fucking it up. And then we'd stop. Yeah. But we got That's it. That's the other angle of it. Yeah. I got my little warm up, and then we switched it up. And I had fun oh, to yeah. that. That was it. Was cool. We got. It'll be interesting to listen back. We got a a big chunk of just rocking and rolling. Yeah, well, it sound like a third grade band. Just like going. Sometimes, wah, wah, sometimes wah. it's gonna sound like a high school band because we were playing. Oh, there was some like bad. The high school. Well, like we played some music that was like what I played in high school. Like that was the point to play some like straight power chord punk. Um. And I was just going straight for it, like I used to play it, you know. I I wanted to bring bring back that sound, slightly maybe tightened up with age. Well, it was it was kind of funny because I didn't really know his drumming style, uh -huh. so I didn't know yeah. like what t what kind That's of tempo of we were gonna go for, and so I, I would just kind of come in with well, and that, and I was still figuring out where the chords were. Yeah, it's. And then You're on your toes all so night. So <laughs> it nat it well yeah. it naturally started off slow, and uh, yeah, it just took this weird kind of grungy. Well, it didn't even take a turn because it started off mm -hmm. that way. So it started off kind of grungy, and then it progressed into a little more punkish up tempo. Once we started feeling it, that was when it was cool. When the tempo kicked up a little bit, we everybody kind of locked on. Uh huh. Yeah, it was it was fun. It was cool to have a single guitarist do rhythm and lead too, because when that rhythm drops out uh -huh. and it goes straight to lead, then yeah. you got the bass underneath bass, to just combo. drive the song and yeah. the drums. You know, it's just got a good, simple. Yeah. And and if you if you're good and you got chops on each instrument, then it just sounds so tight and it, it's a good sound. Yeah, it is. And we had a couple moments where it felt That's like what we were locked on. About the power trio. I do, yeah, I do like when it, the, the rhythm guitar drops out and then the lead comes in. It's just all there. Yep. Yeah. Yep. A good moment to it down on the bass. That's the one thing that, uh, to tap on our earlier discussion before we played about digital, is it just gives you some much infinite possibilities as far as what you can do to the song. I mean, you can loop or double or layer or, you know, just yeah. so easily you can manipulate a song from what it really is. I mean, anybody could come in here and play a drum beat yeah, good enough to one get measure. <laughs> one measure and loop it and make it sound like a tight drum beat when... And, in reality, they can't really play it that yeah. tight. And you Digital, can fake it. You can it. take a song, a jam, and make it into a song. Whereas tonight, easier. we were all analog tonight with I mean, a digital recorder. Yeah, we're but, recording digital, but yeah, nothing. We're doing no looping. All it is is. But our yeah. our jam was kind of analog. Yeah, yeah because no, it is. It's, we could cut and paste it into a song if we want. With well, digital, we, we could, but we were just kind of all rolling on our and that's, on our heads. Yeah, and that's how it's coming. It'll you know. It'll be released. It's just like we played music. That's what this format is, yeah. That. But I do cut down parts because it's too long. I, you know, there's like downtime, so. Well, we got a lot of good discussion tonight. But I think so. Did you have a good time? Fuck yeah. Yeah. That was I fun. Did.
All right, man. I, I never know what to cool. expect when I come to the yeah. history school. Nice meeting you, Andrew. <laughs> nice meeting you, Trevor. <laughs> you too, Glenn. <laughs> All right. All right, Dustin, Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> the last, right. the one of the, all the time people call him the wrong name, Dennis. <laughs> been, yeah, Dennis. Dude, you know where that came from? So I'm at Andrew's work today. No, no, no. I'm at work today, and <laughs> I had to go to this job, and I I went out to Pleasant Grove. Do you know where Pleasant Grove is? Yeah, way like out in Mary's the country, Drill, kind of between. Mary's no, it's Drill just and right out here. Oh, down Roseville, like Pleasant Grove. Yeah, baseline. Yeah, well, it's out there. It's rural, and anyway, I went to school out there when I was little, and I drove out there today and I hadn't been down there in a while and I remember somebody's that I went to school with his name's Andrew drove by <laughs> his house and it took me a second to hear his name or to figure out to remember his name and so Andrew was stuck in my head and then I inhaled some marijuana and <laughs> called you Andrew sorry Dustin it's all right it's nice to meet you called worse good to jam with you, you. too yeah all That's right fun. Fun. signing everyone. off huh so next off. time you rip.